Okay, welcome future school counselors. I have a question for you. What would it be like for you to step in the shoes of another person's life? What would it be like for you to understand their feelings, to think about what they're thinking, to understand their experiences? Take 10 seconds to think about that question. I think it would open up new experiences. Okay, open up new experiences. Different perspective. Okay, there are different perspectives that uh, you would get to receive. Good, good point. Yes, what else? Who is this person? Oh, you would want to know who that person is. That's very important because a lot of times, just from my own experiences, I can tell you, I meet a lot of students that I really don't know. But when I get to listen to their perspectives and listen to their points of view, I get, a, get to really understand who they are. I think it's important to know how other people feel so we can understand the emotions and what they're going through at that moment. Yes, very good. That's excellent because a lot of times, and that's what leads to what we're going to go over, what I want to introduce you to is to Carl Rogers' person-centered therapy. His approach will, be help, will help us as school counselors to be able to identify, to actually step in the shoes of other students, to be able to understand their emotions, their experiences, and what they're going through. His is a non-directive approach. His perspective is, is that the client knows what hurts inside of them. They also know how to direct themselves to solve their own problems and what the experiences that they've gone through that brings a burden to them. So through his approach, he is able to help students and as school counselors, that gives us the opportunity to apply his approach. And that's what we're gonna look at next. What we're gonna do today is, our learning objective is to create the client-centered therapeutic alliance. By learning and applying the three client-centered techniques, to elementary school students. And the three techniques that we're going to take a look at, if you go to your, to the personal center therapy on page five, you will see the three techniques there. You'll see empathy, unconditional positive regard, and genuineness. Also, you may see it as under called congruence. What I'd like you to do is to pair up. What we're going to do is called the Think, Pair, and Share. So I'd like for you two to join together, and you two, okay? And here's what we're gonna do. Now, I've kind of modified it a little bit, so what I'd like for you to do is to look over, kind of read the, uh, the, the definitions of the techniques and what's given to you, read it to each other, and then once you read it, share, take turns sharing, okay? Take turns which one wants to share with what, I mean, I'll leave that up to you. Then once you have had your discussion, look up so that you can sh we can share it with each other. Okay? I'll go ahead and give you three minutes to do that.
I'm glad you kind of brought that up because there is the confusion that goes on between us. So the question I have to ask you, you went over the three, you discussed it. So so uh, what did you get from those three going over that? What do you think about them? Well, the body language is really important and key, I think, to gain the trust of exactly. Yeah, yeah. The body language is very important because when you don't when you when you lose the sense when you have mixed feelings and you're not being honest and sincere, right? That becomes very important. Mm -hmm. Okay? So pay it, pay close attention to that. When you're looking at the body and you're saying one thing, but your body is saying something different, that's gonna send mixed messages. And you have to be very careful. That's a good point. I'm glad you brought that one up. Okay, so now let's take a let's take a look at it. if you were to pick one of these for yourself that you would connect to that makes you feel comfortable, with, which one would they be? Empathy. You think empathy? I, I, think I, I um, identify myself okay. with the empathy. Uh, it's easy for me to understand how other people feel okay. uh, without becoming sympathetic to the situation. Good. Yeah, excellent. And I like the way the fact that you brought up that, that being sympathetic. That is very different. Be, uh, when you sympathize with somebody, you're showing that you you're emotionally connecting with their feelings and thoughts, but in a sense that you're you're kind of moving in the air of judging, that you're taking sides on an issue, and that's not what what we're really looking for in this approach with client-centered therapy. What you're looking at is understanding their feelings and reflecting on their feelings and letting them know that you acknowledge what they're going through in the here and now in the moment. That's a good point. Excellent. Is there anybody else? Um, I like the unconditional positive regard. Okay. Because um, I, I always like to give people the benefit of the doubt and okay. like to hear their side of the story. Okay. That's good. That's very good that you do that because a lot of times, most of us that well, in our positions and the jobs we have, we take the position of always directing. And a lot of times where you want to step in and solve the problem, when really a lot of people have their they have their own solutions, but that's what makes this uh, approach so uh, really good mm -hmm. in its technique is that it allows the student to do some soul searching, finding themselves, discovering what's going on inside of them, and bringing it forward without the counselor doing that. Mm -hmm. And that's very good is that you can make that connection because in, in some cases it's very difficult for people to mm -hmm. to say, oh well, wait, I already know the solution. Let me just go ahead and give it to you and direct you, but then, then the person is not really applying it and not learning it for themselves. And that's the whole key with this approach. Okay, so let's, uh, so how can empathy, unconditional positive regard be applied to the relationship? It builds trust. Okay, you can build trust. Excellent, great. What else? I, I'm still having a hard time trying to, uh, I mean, I understand, but ca can you help me? I mean, sure. give, us, give me some uh, examples. Uh, I'm still having a hard time trying to connect all three. Okay, so here's what we can do. What I'd like for all of you to do, because I think this will, hopefully this can get you there, is I want you to visualize as if you are the counselor with the student. Okay? At this moment in time, you're with the counselor, you're the counselor, you're with the student that's upset, depressed, whatever it may be. And what you're trying to do is take the three techniques that you know and to apply them in the relationship. Would that help? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. So I think that's what, you know, when you Think about it in that way, that gives you a better understanding that taking these three approaches will help to develop that. It will make the connection, it will start supporting where the student will, may start sharing their emotions, their thoughts and their feelings, 
and it starts to establish the therapeutic relationship. Because now you're using empathy, you're understanding their emotions. You're using unconditional positive regard. You're not directing, they're gonna start directing themselves to figure out their own problem. And then you're using genuineness. You're being sincere and honest and full about it, okay? So what I want you to do now, and I'm gonna ask you to do a little bit more digging, okay? And so what I'd like you to do is to go ahead and see if you can find some common and different factors that support the three uh, client-centered techniques and the client-centered therapeutic relationship. So go ahead and pair up and go ahead and do that. Okay. establishing trust. <coughs> That's what it does. That would be a common factor because if there's no trust between the counselor or the student, right, mm -hmm. the, the therapeutic relationship wouldn't be the start. Right. And that's where the three factors come in and help out. Right. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. okay, good. okay, so guys, what are some common factors that you uh, came up with? So all the focus is on the student. Okay, great. Yeah, because the counselor is really not directing or presenting their, their, their thoughts and their ideas or making any conditions, are they? No, they're just kind of listening to the, to the, uh, excellent, very good, yes. Uh, the student is the center, or in control of the situation. Yeah, that's a good one, good point. You're allowing the student to take control of themselves and make some self-discoveries. You're guiding them to that, to the emotional connection, to the, when they start sharing about what happened to them, you're, you're basically giving them a voice. Because a lot of times kids, from my experience, shows that they don't really have the voice because it's what everybody else said. So a lot of times when they come down to see me as, and we start to talk, I make that connection with them and say, okay, what is it that happened to you? Share what your feelings are and what your thoughts are. And let's see what we, where we can go from there. Yeah, excellent. Anybody else? Well, I think they're all, all here in helping the students solve their own, their own problems instead of the, the therapy solving the problem. Yeah. Uh, okay. And that's a good point because there, there are therapies that are out there that um, the therapists are more, to use a direct approach in the therapy. Um, but one of the, what, there's evidence that shows through research that a lot of times the evidence the uh, approach, the, the three uh, techniques that we're using now actually is, a, is applied more with all the counselors and therapists. So research shows that if more therapists are applying this approach and using it for therapy every four because it, it works. So here are some common factors. Okay. I think some of you kind of really touched on the self-actualization part. And here are some differences. And the one thing right here I think is very important is the, is the student sometimes will be judgmental, but as a counselor, we hold back, we don't, we don't judge at all. It, it's about them figuring and working through the process. Okay, okay so 
I think we have a good idea of the three techniques. So uh, what do you think is the best way to really put these things into action? Probably through practice. Excellent. So guess what you guys are going to do? You guys are going to role play, right? You're going to practice the therapeutic techniques with the techniques and see how you would actually interact when you do the client-centered therapeutic alliance. Okay, so let's get started. But now what I'd like for you four to do is to decide which of you are going to be the observers, who's going to take the role as the counselor, and the student, I'll let you make that choice. You have about I'll 10 the students. you know you can uh, go to page seven and there's, there's four other additional techniques you can use that will help guide you when you start to do the dialogue with the student. We didn't cover that here, that's another class, but um, you can look real quickly. One of the ones that I, I use a lot is the um, paraphrasing. This is where, for example, when a student tells me that he's angry because the teacher may have uh, taken his exam off the table without Feeling permission, so I would acknowledge and say, So I understand that you're upset because the teacher took the pencil from you or the book from you. Okay, so I'm kind of like paraphrasing, so it lets them know that I'm acknowledged. That's one of them. You can also use the mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's kind of like to encourage them to let them know that you're, you're listening to them and you're in full tension. Okay, so here's the scenario. So we have um, Carlos Santiago, he's a fourth grade student who's in Miss Cummings class, and Carlos is uh, coming to school every day for the last week. He's sleeping at his desk, doesn't open his book, doesn't do the assignments, doesn't do any of that. So, you know, Miss Cummings is at the point where she doesn't know what to do, so she's written a referral for Carlos to go down to see the counselor. Carlos, with no problem, takes a referral, goes down to the counselor. He is now seeing the counselor, and so he's now hand the referral to the counselor, the counselor reads the referral, and what is the counselor to do? Carlos, how are you today? Oh, I'm tired. You're tired? Yeah, I'm tired. Why? Well, I didn't really get a lot of sleep last night. Oh, so you saying that you didn't get a lot of sleep last night? Yeah, I stayed up all night playing Fortnite. You stay all awake all night playing games, video yeah. games. Yeah. So how is it affecting your your performance in school when you stay awake until late at night? I don't know. I mean, bad, I guess. I don't know. You think that's a good thing to do? Okay, so let's go ahead and stop at this point, okay? Okay, so you did very good. I think that you did an excellent job, guys. So let's take a moment and reflect what happened here. So what are some of your reflections and ideas? What did you see? What did you observe? Um, so I don't know. I think that it's trying to get him to self-reflect on his actions okay. and realize that there's something wrong with what he's doing without kind of hinting that there's something okay, wrong. Okay, good right? point, yeah. You get, trying to get him to understand that there's something going on with him mm -hmm. and that he needs to realize it and see where it's going, mm -hmm. okay? And the reason why I stopped at that point is because I started seeing to kind of shift a little bit more into where it became more, a little bit more directive. And that's what we have to be able to be careful with because what happens is we don't mean to, but we can shift because now we're trying to figure out how am I gonna get him to open up how am I going to get to say what I need to figure out what's going on? And by, without intention, we start to want to start directing it. And we have to be very careful we do that. Yes? Did you notice anything? Any thoughts? I didn't say no thoughts. Okay. Okay, so what was your thought? What, I mean, to that experience? Well, I, I think I, I started um, being empathic, but okay. then I noticed that I became more like in an attacking mode like 
why you why you <laughs> have to stop yeah. asking see there's that there's that judgmental thing that comes yes. in, right? Yes. And so that's this is we can't help from doing that. We just it's that a habit maybe mm -hmm. and we have to learn to say, okay, whoa, 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 I gotta catch that. And this is where when you're counseling you have to really self monitor. And be careful because your instinct nature is what it just wants to go out there and say, okay, you did this, you need to, you know. But we can't allow ourselves to do that because we're really trying to get to understand what's happening. And that's very important. So this is great, guys. You did a great job. So let's go ahead and swap out and get the two observers to step in. And uh, choose and, and the other two swip, swip in. You know, one will be the counselor, one will be the uh, student. You're the student. And you're the counselor? Okay. Okay, okay, great. Okay. So you guys are going to be observing. Okay? And here we go. Okay, this is another situation. It's a new scenario. Okay? So we have Manny Martinez. He's an angry fifth grade student. Okay? And he's just... Uh, the class is taking an exam. And Miss Butler has come up to Manny and asked Manny to stop tapping his pencil because it's distracting and disrupting the, the, the exam. Students are trying to concentrate on their exam. Manny just gets upset. He pushes the paper and pencil and it falls on the floor, he pushes his desk, stomps out of the classroom, walks out the hallway without permission. And so Ms. Butler calls the administration, the principal and assistant principal meets him out in the hallway, and then they guide him down to see the counselor. Manny is very upset, he's angry, He's sitting now, he has met the counselor, and he is now with the counselor. So what is the counselor to do? Hi, Manny. How are you feeling today? Um, pretty mad. Yeah. A little mad. Yeah, I heard um, something happened in the classroom. Can you walk me through what happened? Yeah, I was stepping on the, on the desk with my pencil because it makes a pretty nice noise. And my teacher took my pencil. Can you believe that? Oh, yeah. I would be upset too. I completely understand. If somebody was to take something of mine, you know, naturally we get upset. So, why do you think the teacher took your pencil? Because she doesn't like the noise. I don't know. It's my, it's my pencil. Yeah. So how do you think that impacted others around you? Hmm. Uh, maybe they didn't like the noise that it was making. Were they working on anything? A test, I guess. Okay. So how do you think you could handle that in the future? Because you, right, we don't want our pencil taken away, so how, how can we handle okay. that in the future? Goodness. Okay, so let's kind of take a moment there. Okay, she's asking some very good questions. How would you uh, handle that? Okay, and he's starting to reflect on it, but he's, what's happening with him? Kind of shutting down. He's starting to yeah. shut down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens that, and then there we go again. To we have to be very be careful because of how we address the questions, and when we're when we're saying it, how do we express it? Yeah. Because what's happening is if we have our own judgment, it just creeps in there, and it may even give a sense of like how do the other students feel. Mm -hmm. So it starts shifting into judgmental. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very careful. When we ask what type of questions, because it could start causing him to feel like, okay, you're judging me, and that and that's what makes it any different from anything else. So, you know, how we ask questions and what we're thinking, we have to be very careful how we do that. You did an excellent job, though, excellent job, because I love the way that you came in there. You started identifying to his feelings, and he he opened up, and you started to share that information. How did you feel when you did that? Well. Uh I felt a little bit better, I started getting the information out of stuff, but... Okay. Okay, great. So you kind of, it kind of, when you're leading to them and they're starting to feel open, then we got to be careful, whoa, when we start asking questions, questions may start to, to draw back, okay? Excellent job, though. Very good, because you got him to open up. A lot of times, from my experience, it takes sometimes more than that, you know, just to kind of really reach and say, you know, I really, I really, you know, some students are not... And that's why it's one, and then one question is uh, multicultural. We have to think that students come from different cultures. We have to consider the fact that some of them are very shy, withdrawn, and it's just maybe the right approach. But we try to be able to really to get to open up and share their emotions, and we go from the emotional part and see where they can make some discoveries 
and start telling you, and then you kind of feed into that and guide you in that way. Okay? Okay, so any observations? Uh, I just noticed that he, he started kind of being defensive, but eventually he became more like, more re re reflective. Reflective, so good, excellent, good observation. Good, excellent. Yeah, you know, those towards the end, uh, just getting a little, I guess, excited with the questioning and kind of yeah. almost interrupting. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. So yeah. And, and, so and and that's the thing is because we, when we become anxious, this is what happens. Mm -hmm. We become anxious because we want to solve the problem, and not realizing that our own anxiousness may be causing him to shut back a little bit because it's, it can go your way. So, okay. Great job, guys. Yeah, let's give you some, everybody give yourself a hand. You guys did awesome. Awesome. Good job. Okay, so, okay, let me kind of, I'm going to go ahead and summarize here. So, what we got a chance to do today was to introduce the, the client-centered theory, the, the therapy. We were able to learn about the three client-centered techniques. We also were able to apply the techniques through role playing and observation. And so therefore, our, our learning outcome, I believe, was met. And that was that we were going to uh, create the therapeutic alliance, right, by learning and applying the three te client center techniques. And that was able to provide that for us. And this concludes my lesson. Great job, guys.